What's good with the collective? Man, y'all know we back with another banger, another reaction. I appreciate everybody who been tapping in, running up, and subbing up. If you're new to the channel, please like, comment, subscribe. Hit that bell so you always notified whenever we drop an upload. Y'all know we coming with about four videos a week, man. And this is for entertainment and educational purposes as well. And when you like and comment and subscribe to the channel, it helps the collective get bigger, helps the community grow, helps more people who like this type of content tap in with this content. But... Make sure your post notifications are on. Again, if y'all want a different time frame of me to post these videos, y'all let me know. Right now it's 7.57 a.m. I'm in Cali, that's West Coast time. So yeah, Pacific time frame. But if y'all want me to upload at any other time frame, y'all let me know whatever works best for y'all. As long as it, everybody's in green, and we all agree that it's a good time to upload, we might switch it. But I ain't gonna hold you, bro. Let's get right into the video. Let's go. Where do you go in your dream? What do you do? Now, as we have discussed a few times, there are many types of what you call dreams. Some of them are just what many people think, where you may be reinvestigating, revisiting the things of the day, processing information mentally, emotionally, planning out certain things, coming to certain conclusions while you sleep. However, there are those things you remember as dreams that your physical mind puts together out of available symbols, available props to help you remember something at least akin to or close to an experience you might have had on another realm. <laughs> I once had a dream where... Um... You know, I was in a building and it was, there was a earthquake going on and then all of a sudden a tornado comes around and I start floating in the air and then I, I always wind up like, okay though. Is there you go? Is that some, <laughs> there you go. You always wind up okay when you stay in the proper state. It doesn't matter what happens. It only matters what you do with what happens. It only matters, literally matters, what state of energy you're in. That's what creates matter. Death doesn't scare me, but you know what does? The music industry. So this creator, Epic Paranormal, just made a video about how he went to a Lana Del Rey concert and the vibes were really off. It wasn't only like the spooky vibe going on on stage, but the fans in the crowd were doing really abnormal things. Like there was this one fan that was like screaming the entire concert, begging Lana Del Rey to unalive him. Like it was not normal crowd fan behavior. He said he kept trying to take pictures and every time he did, his phone would distort the faces. Like, what is going on? And then how do you tell me that this is Lana Del Rey? Like that, that does not look like, that looks like a demon. Like she looks like a man in a mask and like a coat and like, ugh. And to give you a reference on why this is so weird, she was dressed like this. And it's not like one photo or one person, it was everyone. This girl upped the contrast of the photo and you would think that it would make her look more like Lana Del Rey, but she looks less. She looks more like a demon or a man in a mask. Now you could argue he is a paranormal content creator. Is this just content he's trying to make? Who knows? But yeah, people are terrified. What do you think? Follow my TikTok, Instagram, and YouTube for more. It really helps when you interact. I saw on the Super Bowl, and I don't know if y'all saw this. For one, y'all seen him wearing red. Y'all saw him wearing red, right? With Usher and Alicia Keys. They was wearing red. But I also want to say, if y'all noticed during the game, when they, well, before I get to that, while they was performing, they was wearing red. Did y'all see the checkerboard behind them for a hot second? It was literally behind them on a, like a little light or something. But the main thing I saw, and I, I didn't I didn't understand this one, but I, I feel like it had a huge symbol. It was a symbolism. It was symbolism behind something. I can't get what exactly. One of the times, I wanna say the Niners was kicking off. When the ball was in the air, did y'all see the flames sitting up way in the back of the stadium? 
I can't be the only one who saw it. It was a flame. It was like, uh, it looked, it looked fake though. But it was a flame just f flaming. And I think it was in the middle of the uh, performance too, in a halftime show with um, Alicia Keys and Usher. But a lot of people, y'all gonna say, oh, well, I ain't watched that because it is that and the third. Well, me, I'd rather go, I, I, I'm a soldier. I gotta go, I gotta go see what symbolisms they put in our face. And I'm gonna bring it back. The people who don't want to do that, I mean, everybody got their own roles. My role, I'm not afraid of it. So put me right in front of it. Let me see everything. Let me watch it all. Let me pick up on and let me test myself on seeing what symbols I can see. I like I like to compete with myself. So I sit back and be like, man, I saw that symbol. I saw that symbol. I saw that symbol. Or what did I miss? And then I'll go back and look and see what I missed. It's like reading a book, man. Like, but you can't be scared because then again, you're vibrating off of a, a low frequency. You can't vibrate off a low frequency and expect things to work in your favor. You can't manifest at that point. Say, I say, I say, peace, love, and light, truth, and chaos. Shout out to all the high vibrational beings of the planet. All the low vibrational beings you need to step up and get your evolutional process game on. I say, so what we're not going to do is we're not going to sit here and say that Anubis is not Rashad Jamal or Rashad Jamal is not Anubis. Rashad Jamal is Anubis. That is his Egyptian deity. Nobody is going to play with him and his power. He was the guardian, the guardian that was trying to protect everybody down here and wake them up. Now he has been locked up. He needs to get his power back you need to say Rashad Jamal is free you need to say Rashad Jamal is Anubis give him back his power I say peace love and light truth and chaos what did he say let the record reflect that he is who he is he say he is I say I say I say BY is real here we are at part five where I've been telling you that Kobe Bryant has been playing the role of this guy y'all still don't believe me don't worry about it I got more evidence on February 8th 2024 they unveiled the statue of Kobe Bryant. That same day, Miles Garrett wins the Defensive Player of the Year award. So let me break this date down for you. The two represents Gianna Bryant. That was her number. And the eight and the 24 represents Kobe Bryant, the numbers he wore. From Miles Garrett's birthday, which is December 29th, all the way up until the award and statue unveiling, February 8th, that is a total of 41 days. Who died at the age of 41? Come on, y'all. He's playing in your face. This is Kobe. There's no other way to say it. Look at, look at the poses. He's not doing that because he idolized Kobe. He is Kobe. So why does Miles Garrett wear number 95? Well, you take the 95 and you minus it by the death age of Kobe, you're going to get 54. So this is where Gematria comes in, all right? In the purest form and the purest sight forever, Kobe Bean Bryant equals 54. And the Instagram name of Miles Garrett, Flash Garrett, equals 54. No accident. Stop letting these guys play in your face. These celebrities got multiple roles. My name is B.Y. is real. I don't do conspiracies. I do real ass information. I'm going to be honest, man. Kobe, Kobe, Kyrie Irving, John Morant, Derrick Rose, Devin Booker, them, like, Anthony Edwards, I'm like, and LaMelo Ball, I gotta say, like, my seven top, top of the line, I love them players, bro. I love the way they ball. So it's kind of hard for me to look at the greatest of all time, Kobe. To me, he was on Jordan level. He was better than Bron to me. And that's my childhood idol bro like i have a hard time believing that one but then again you gotta let go of personal feelings sometimes so i'm still deep i'm still diving deep down that little rabbit hole to see what i believe because i also had heard rashad jamal by the way free rashad jamal y'all like that little segue huh threw that one right in there but he also said that that's why jordan was crying so hard because the rest of the ballers in the league is all robots and yeah that jordan is pretty much jordan and Kobe was like the only two that wasn't Robots. So that's why he was crying so hard at the funeral of Cubby's funeral, because Cubby was one of the real, one of the like an actual person that was giving the robots the blues. So I, I, that's why I said I got that deeper down that rabbit hole. Cubby was something different. He's something different on the court, man, and his mentality is something different. His pain tolerance. So, but then again, like I said, I got to dive deeper down that rabbit hole, bro. But I mean, I'm still human, so I still got my feelings towards what I raised on or what I like or people I felt like I had a connection to based off how they move or they personal uh like the way they view life and things like that so 
Yeah, I don't know. Free, free Rashad Jamal again, man. Three dreams that you should consider a warning. Let me know about any dreams you want to know about or any questions you may have on this video in the comments. If you have any of these actions, signs, or symbols in your dream, it means that you should probably be very aware of who's around you and what's around you in your waking world. <laughs> The first one is of violence, whether it's pew pewing, whether it's, you know, uh, a blade, whether it's uh, physically. This dream will usually mean that there's someone or something around you trying to control you. However, you are escaping, okay? And because you are escaping, they're trying to plan how they're going to get you back, how they're going to get back at you, how they're going to keep using you. So be aware of the red flags within people and situations. The next one is any kind of animal biting you, especially if it was an unexpected bite. These are people in your waking world who are doing things behind your back, who are purposely trying to hurt you, who are purposely conspiring against you. They might even be talking shit about you. This last one is usually really creepy. So if you ever hear someone or something say within your dream, wake up, you better wake up. <laughs> the footage you're about to see is footage I found two days ago after pulling the foyer with the Greer Police Department. One more thing I got to do with you, it's called a risk assessment. There's just a couple questions that are like yes or no. So watch his hand while you ask the yes or no question. This one, does he have any access to guns or weapons? No, because he's not. He starts off good with him signing no, as she said. Uh, it immediately takes a turn for the worse with the second question. Has he ever threatened to kill you before? No, I don't kill Now let's take it back just a second. Notice how she shakes her head though and says no. Michael Kimber, which is no longer a police officer at all, signed yes. Has he ever tried to physically harm you? Yeah, yeah there's been past stuff. Has he ever threatened to harm your children or pets? Uh, like a kick and also something like that. Like yeah, like, has he ever turned dog? Majority of this interview, they have no idea what each other is saying to each other, as you will constantly see. Watch how he doesn't even let her finish response. He just signs what he wants. Oh, yeah. She's mean, she's a I got you. Uh, she talked for four seconds after he signed. Um, does he try to control most of your daily activities, like your relationships, finances, transportation, communication? So look what she responds with, and he says, I'm trying to control her with this response. No confrontation, but he said he don't want my family around me. Okay. And I always have arguments because he don't want my family. He signed, I'm stalking her and controlling her because I didn't want her family around. Is he unemployed? Does he have a job? Yeah, he's, he's employed. Okay. He's employed. Um, does he follow or spy on you? What is that? Does he, like, follow you around without you knowing and try to, like, you know, see what you're doing? So watch what she says on this one, and he says yes. Uh, well, in, like, uh, in my social media, uh, with my friends, yeah, when, when uh, we were separating about those charges. And yeah. and Once again, he signs yes while she's still talking. Just because she said, I looked at her friend's social media. Yeah, he, he, he was doing that. He's been following all my friends in the Instagram and trying to say things. Okay. Yeah. He, and everybody wants to so I want everybody to notice what's about to happen. He doesn't even ask her the next question and just signs yes. That's so mean, you know? Has he ever tried to threaten, uh, has he ever, like, said he was going to kill himself or, like, actually tried to kill himself? No, 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 no. Um... You said you did separate from him for a little while, like last uh, time he got in trouble? Yeah, when, when, that, was, that was like, a, we, we separate like, um, we separate when we put those charges and all that and we, and we come back okay. again together. And does he become violent when he's using like alcohol or drugs? Notice how he says when, as if he's just saying I do alcohol and do drugs. Excuse me? Again. Like when he when he drinks, does he get like um Like once again I said they have no idea what each other are saying. Well, mean, well, aggressive. He don't drink and the only thing we're smoking home is that things in their babe uh uh yeah, okay. Delta, that's legal, that's the only thing we do in home. Okay. Can you just um sign there for me to sign all over that with you? And then that's all the paperwork I need. I can get started on the um report and then talk with the judge about trying to get the warrants for him. And Notice how he's talking as if he's the man. So when I found out I had a warrant out on me, I sent these videos to the cop to show him the reason I left her when she was beating the shit out of me. He said he's going to do nothing with it. Two years later, I find out this cop is no longer in law enforcement and I'm trying to get the evidence on him, which the lieutenant is trying to stop, which is right here. And I show him the videos you're going to see coming up and he says he's going to do nothing with it. I'm going to destroy your home. Call the police. Call the police. This is the same. Why can't? Because that's the only percent where there's video for that. I'm being choked with my shirt. I'm being choked with my shirt. I'm asking her to let go of me. The same night, the night before is when y'all came out. Well, no, this is like when I left. But this is how I was treated. I was choked with my shirt. I'm asking her to stop. And you're saying that's not... I don't know what the context of that is. Oh, she came up here and just said words with no evidence. Mm -hmm. No, she had some other things to go along with it. Well, what? And you've gotten the reports on that. But I filed the Freedom of Information Act two weeks ago and I got the camera based footage and I don't think they even realized what I was going to find on the footage, what you just seen. Pictures? From yeah. what, what? What are these pictures from? What? 
She gave a statement and she provided pictures. I did too. I called about this. And you can go to court with that. I will. And, and, I that, and that, that is over two years old and there's no other context. There's no, there's no statute of limitation in South Carolina. And you can file charges on anybody no matter how long it's been. There's, there's, no, there's no statute of limitation. I understand that. I'm not saying that there is. And I've sent this same video to okay. the same officer two years ago with their emails. Okay. Who was that? Uh, officer Campbell. I have to... When the warrants went out on me, I sent him the videos once again, as you can see right here, of the emails to him two years ago, which he did nothing the with. I sent them to you. Okay. All right. Well, and he said, I'm not going to help you. I'm not going to do anything with that. The other charges you're just going to go to court with. You're not going to do anything with this? No, Why not? not? I'm not. Because my neighbor said, don't call the police on her for punching me in my nose. I did nothing but let this girl because she was beating the crap out of me. And she went up in the police station and this cop completely falsified everything. And this is how I'm being treated. Also, my mother was dying and I promised her I was coming home when Carolina did this to me. And they told me if I turn myself in, they let me go so I could go to my mom. I never stood by my mom or her grave. Boy, I'd be so pissed. Oh, my God. See, that's the stuff that, that's the stuff that make a man fly off the handle. He trying to show and prove for himself, like, man, no, nah, y'all can't do that to me. And then his mom, too. Like, he, he got evidence. He got proof. He got proof. And one cop sees the email and says, I'm not going to help you. And then the other one says, I'm not doing nothing with that. That's crazy, man. But I'm going to be honest. There's not, not all cops are bad. Not all are bad. We Not everybody bad. We got bad people. We got good people. We got... Bad cops, good cops. We got bad firefighters, good firefighters. Good soldiers, bad soldiers. Like, it's good and bad in everything in this world. Whatever you look at. But, I mean, more times than not, we see situations where the cops ain't so uh, pleasant, a pleasant um, experience with them. I haven't, yeah. I keep it calm, but I know I've seen situations where cops, some cops have escalated the situation more times than not. When we didn't call them for help, I've had friends um, uh, had bad things happen to them from police and they no longer with us based off of like the cops being called to help them and they didn't help them. They ended up hurt, make, making the situation worse. So I would say like, that's why we don't really trust them as much in like the community I come from. And that's just, that's like people who struggling. That could be any color, but that's just people who struggling in general. And we don't really mess with them. And people who call them, like, yeah, we look at them like, bro, you just called them on us? Like, what is you doing? Especially if we just having a talk or if it ain't even nothing violent and you doing, or you don't want to be violent. But women like her, she kind of scary. I can't say all the way women like her, but just based off the evidence that was put to us on this video, women like her kind of scary. So, fellas, y'all got to be careful with them ones, bro. You got to be careful with them ones because they'll drag your name through the mud. And they the ones... Violent, like trying to try to bring violence to you. I am plum shooketh. I have another Mandela effect, and there's literally no way to break this to y'all in an easy fashion. I just can't believe this. This is not real life. It can't be. It just cannot be. But let's get into it. So this is my Bible. I believe it's the New International Version. This is Job 39, verse 10. In my Bible, it says, Can you bind the wild ox with a harness to plow from the furrow? Or will he harrow the furrows for you? But baby, you take your butt over to the King James Version, and this is what it says. Y'all ain't gonna believe this. Canst thou bind the unicorn with his band in the furrow, or will he harrow the valleys after thee? I'm sorry, unicorn? Y'all, I don't know when there has ever been talk of a unicorn in the Bible. And my, when, somebody please help me because right now I am really like shook. It literally says unicorn. Here's another Bible that I have on my phone. King James Version says the exact same thing. Canst thou bind the unicorn with his band in the furrow or will he harrow the valleys after thee? But wait, there's more. This is my Bible. Psalms 22 verse 21. Save me from the lion's mouth, for you have answered me kindly from the horns of the wild oxen. Now let's go see what King James Version has to say. Save me from the lion's mouth, for thou hast heard me from the horns of the unicorns. Again, the other Bible app I have. Horns of the unicorns. Oh, wait, there's more. Psalms 92 verse 10, my Bible. But my horn, emblem of excessive strength and stately grace, you have exalted like that of a wild ox. I am anointed with fresh oil. Let's go see what the King James Version says. Shall we? But my horn shalt thou exalt like the horn of a unicorn. I shall be anointed with fresh oil. My other Bible app. But my horn shalt thou exalt like a horn of a unicorn. 
I shall be anointed with fresh oil. Like, I don't know what to think. What is going on? I have never, ever heard the Bible talk about a unicorn. What have they done? And why is it changed? I'm so terrified right now. This is not real life. Like, this cannot be real. Like, somebody's playing a joke. I'm not okay, in case you're wondering. What else did uh, King James write? <laughs> what else was he on? Hey, that's not normal. No, what is that? What are those little things? What? He's firing up again. Bro, what is that? What the? What the fuck is that? Dude, I have the chills right now. That's crazy. Bro. Rebel. Look at the etymology. Rebel. To change the frequency. Bro, that pisses me off. The fact that, oh my god, like, oh, we let we let the wrong people, we let the wrong people get in power with this, man. They they oh they they knew what they was doing. They was changing the frequency then, and we gotta be mad at ourselves or our 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 uh not 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 mad at at our um ancestors or nothing, but like. The generations before us, man, we let it slip. We let it slip. Like we we gave the power up. Man. That that gets me. That gets me because it's like, come on, bro. They took all the bills. And you mean to tell me, yeah, like, oh man, that, that pisses me off, bro. We could have been we could have been even further off right now than we was then. And oh, bro. Sometimes like it's a few it's a few videos we'll watch and it piss me off when I watch them I'll be like come on bro we really let that out of our hands we had the power we had it we had it either we probably got too comfortable we got too cocky or arrogant or something too vain something something and uh, I mean y'all seen Devil uh, Devil's Advocate man with Keanu Reeves in it and his dad was a devil man y'all heard what the devil said about people like vanity. I mean, if y'all know, y'all, if y'all seen that movie, y'all know what that means, like, about as far as vanity. There is a tunnel, and machinery inside that tunnel sends beams of energy in a vast circle. Now the particle accelerator altered the weight of one electron and therefore sh destroyed our universe, shifted us into the universe that's directly next to it, and therefore things are different in this universe. Could the latest revelations from CERN alter the very fabric of our understanding of the cosmos? Scientists at CERN just announced a terrifying new discovery. Building on legacy rich in revolutionary insights into particle physics, from the unveiling of the Higgs boson to other monumental findings, CERN's recent declaration has sent shockwaves throughout the scientific community. Let's explore high-speed particle collisions, state-of-the-art detectors, and the awe-inspiring science that underpins CERN's consistently groundbreaking and somewhat terrifying discoveries. The European Organization for Nuclear Research, more commonly known by its French acronym CERN, is the world's largest particle physics laboratory. Located on the Franco-Swiss border near Geneva, CERN has garnered worldwide attention for its cutting-edge experiments and discoveries in the realm of particle physics, most notably with its Large Hadron Collider, LHC. Founded in 1954, CERN was established to foster scientific research collaboration in Europe post-World War II. The organization began with 12 founding member states and has since grown to include 23 member states. Several other nations also participate in specific projects as observers or associate members. CERN Data Center is crucial for storing, analyzing, and disseminating the vast amounts of data generated by the experiments. CERN produces antimatter to study its properties and the imbalances between matter and antimatter in the universe. In 2012, CERN announced the discovery of the Higgs boson, a particle essential to the standard model of particle physics. This discovery garnered the 2013 Nobel Prize in Physics for theorists Peter Higgs and Francois Englert. CERN is also the birthplace of the World Wide Web, 
In 1989, Sir Tim Berners-Lee, a British scientist at CERN, invented the web to meet the rising demand for information sharing among physicists worldwide. While CERN's contributions to science are undeniable, they've not been without controversy. There have been concerns raised about the potential creation of black holes or unforeseen consequences of high-energy particle collisions. However, extensive research and studies have dispelled most of these concerns, and the consensus is that the experiments at CERN are safe. CERN remains at the forefront of research in particle physics. With its ever-evolving suite of tools and experiments, and a collaborative spirit that spans the globe, CERN has and will continue to push the boundaries of human knowledge, reshaping our understanding of the universe's most fundamental aspects. As research at the LHC and other facilities at CERN continue, the world waits eagerly for the next big discovery that will further illuminate the mysteries of the cosmos. So, what exactly is the LHC, and how important is it for us? The LHC is the world's largest and most powerful particle accelerator, situated approximately 100 meters underground at CERN. The LHC stands as a monumental achievement in the field of particle physics, both for its sheer scale and its scientific accomplishments. The LHC occupies a circular tunnel with a circumference of about 27 kilometers, 17 miles. The tunnel houses a series of superconducting magnets and accelerating structures. These magnets are used to steer and focus beams of particles, ensuring they travel at close to the speed of light. The LHC operates at temperatures colder than outer space, around minus 271.3 degrees Celsius, making it one of the coldest places on Earth. This is essential for the functioning of its superconducting magnets, which lose their superconductivity at higher temperatures. Particles, particularly protons, are accelerated in two high-energy beams traveling in opposite directions. These beams are made to collide at four locations around the LHC ring, corresponding to the positions of four major experiments, Atlas, CMS, ALICE, and LHCB. These general-purpose detectors were essential in the discovery of the Higgs boson in 2012. They continue to explore the frontier of high-energy physics, searching for new phenomena and particles. This detector studies quark-gluon plasma, a state of matter believed to have existed just microseconds after the Big Bang. This experiment investigates the slight differences between matter and antimatter by studying a type of particle called the beauty quark, or bottom quark, atlas. Have you ever walked into a room and you felt like some wouldn't cry right? You know what I'm saying? And you go in there, it's like, mm -mm, mm -mm, I know I shouldn't be in here. This ain't the right place. This ain't the right place. Because you know it's a bunch of energy that's not going on right right there. That's because a bunch of folks are wearing a disguise. See, people wear disguises, but yet when you walk into a place, you can feel it. You know it. That's because you're tapped in. You allow yourself to feel the energies that are around you. That's what you need to do. See, a lot of times we like to push shit off and say, no, nah, this shit don't matter. Yes, it do. You better learn how to start tapping into you and quit... Um, um, quit ignoring all the negative shit that be happening sometimes around you. It's for you to pay attention. It's right then that you need to tap in. Because, see, you don't need to have fear about the abilities that you have. The problem is your abilities, they're not disguised. They're right there for you to use. But you have fear in using those abilities. But yet when you walk into a room, you can feel folks with a disguise on. So stop being fearful of the um, gift that you have and the ability that you have to see what the f*** is going on in front of you. That ability and that gift was given to you for a reason, boo. A lot of times we need to know and we need to see. Huh? It's a rebirth for you. Don't you know that? The rebirth is for you right now. That's why you can see the disguises. Your third eye has been opening for you. But you can't have fear. Because it's allowing you to see through now. All you have to do at once again is tap in. Do the rituals. Mm, not rituals. Do your manifestation. Do the 
the um, things that you need to do every day. Say your affirmations too. Make sure you meditate and take some damn time for you. That's the problem with a lot of folks. They don't know how to take time for themselves. In order for you to take time for yourself, when you do, you'll find there's balance. So you know you need the time for you. No fear when you take the time for you. There's a rebirth because you can see all the disguises that are coming through. Now it's time for you to do the balance, boo. Allow your abilities to come on through. Mm-hmm. It's that time. Now you have a great day on purpose. Ancestors want you to know it's time for you to get balanced and tap in. Don't you know? I say. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. How many of y'all How many y'all been through tarot readings before? Card readings and stuff like that I know I have Worked for me When I finally took the advice a whole year later Life got better Cause I had got the advice in this tarot reading And I was like man But I was so focused on other things That when I finally sat down Started reading I started reading um, Thinking Grow Rich and I started reading The Alchemist uh, and Rich Dad Poor Dad. And life started just getting cool, meditating to doing my work. But she got on the fear. She said, get rid of the fear. When we watch these videos, I'm asking of the collective. Not telling, not demanding, I'm asking. Can we remove the fear? The fear? I could do it individually. Other people could do it individually. But everybody, can we remove the fear and not be afraid? When they say end is coming, the end of the life that they know of, the power they have is ending. Then that's a new world though. If a shift is coming, the world ain't ending, just the world that we know it is ending. Which change can be good, especially considering what we have going on in this world, as I said it before. So can we remove the fear? Because we can't manifest or attract or vibrate at a higher frequency when we fear. So when we watch these videos, let's not be fearful. Let's be aware. Let's stay cautious. And let's stay balanced. And enjoy it, bro. Like don't be scared, bro. Okay, let's like let's remove all that. That's what I'm I'm that's what I'm asking. That's what I'm asking today. Spam it up in the comments if you're riding with that. Was one of the reasons that the Anunnaki left because they were aging uh, faster because they were here on earth. Yes. In the Anunnaki Chronicles and the Lost Book of Enki, it explains exactly how this went. Apparently, remaining on earth, the Anunnaki noticed that they were aging rapidly, a lot faster than on their own planet. This is due to the fact that Nibiru has an elliptical orbit around the sun of 3,600 years. So one year for them, is 3,600 years for us. And that's why we used to call them the immortals because compared to humans, they're immortals. On a side note, I have updates on why we age and it's because of the telomeres. I did a video once. I'm going to continue in the next video. Let's go back to the Anunnaki. So when they realized that they were aging a lot faster, I mean, if it was me, if I'm one of the Anunnaki goddesses here on earth and I see that I'm aging a lot faster compared to Nibiru just because I'm here on Earth. Yeah, after a while, I'm going to be like, I'm going to go home because I don't want to lose this. And I think that that's what happened. And that's what the books say happened. It doesn't say that about everyone. But needless to say, I mean, it doesn't take a genius. Let's all do the math. If it was you, what would you do? Would you live thousands and thousands of years less just to be here on Earth? Hmm. Mm, I don't think so. So yes, that is probably one of the main reasons why they returned on Nibiru. It took me 21 years to realize this about Shrek. So we all watched Shrek growing up, and in the beginning of the movie, we can see our beloved donkey on this market together with Pinocchio. And that made me realize something shocking. Do you remember the story of Pinocchio? So in the Pinocchio movie... Kids are being invited to the Pleasure Island, and they are even encouraged to consume as much tobacco and alcohol as they please there. I mean, look at this. Those are actual cigars, and they are throwing out those cigars like candy. And I couldn't believe what happened next. Shortly after, 
All those kids that fell for these temptations turn into a donkey, get imprisoned, and are sold. And in Shrek, the donkey always behaves so child and human-like. Coincidence? I think not! So that means... Donkey was once one of the kids in Pinocchio that went to Pleasure Island. My childhood was a lie. Ain't that some shit, man? How? Now, I gotta go back and watch Pinocchio, man. I gotta go back and watch that. I didn't even realize it was throwing cigars and kids were picking it up. And Yeah, I gotta go back, man. Because it... They just don't miss with the movies, with the children movies, huh? Cartoons, they don't miss. They put more truth in cartoons than they do in damn adult movies. That's crazy. I mean, they put they put truth in adult movies too. But like, you get what I mean. Like, why would you even put that much truth in kid movies? I had that. That shit's crazy. New commercial for the uh, superb album. So what's weird about this uh, particular Super Bowl ad uh, is the fact that it has a uh, alien abduction scene in it. So what could they be hinting at? Because Mountain Dew has shown a lot of very weird symbolism in the past with some of their stuff. And then it even goes to... Aubrey Plaza flying on dragons and we are entering into the year of the dragon. So again, what could this be hinting at? I'm not sure which betting site this is, but it says bet on Las Vegas to be invaded by aliens and the game ending in a tie. Something weird is definitely going on with all this. And look, Williams rocking the dress. Listen, that's the Hollywood ritual. Cat Williams tried to tell us. Draft him right now. Draft him, fancy football owners. Dra he about to be elite. He about to destroy the league. Defenses won't be able to stop him. Put 12 men on the field against Caleb Williams now because he has, he put on a dress. The ritual is complete. You're about to watch this man just destroy the league, dominate, dominate 10 touchdowns a game. It's over. It is over for the league because of this picture right here. He letting us know right now. The Bears, they got an opportunity to, to, to build around Justin Fields or they can draft Caleb Williams. And I was like, I don't know which one they should. But when I saw this picture right here, I said, yeah, yeah. Cat Williams tried to tell us. He's the guy. The ritual's complete. He's about to be elite. Watch what I tell you. Hey, the ritual is complete. He's about to be elite. Hey, drop that in the comments. Ritual complete. He about to be elite. He about to be elite, man. He right. Fantasy football owners, if y'all rock with him, man, go get him. He already nice. He already nice. He telling people where he going, where he ain't going. If, he get, if these top teams is in this... Projected draft range. He ain't going there. He's staying in college. Like he make enough money off his NIL deals. Hey, he he nice. But that ritual is complete. He about to be even more elite. Straight up. Spam that up in the comments if you know you know about football. <sighs> but that's just crazy. They always putting us in dresses, huh? I mean, I asked my sister that one time. I said, "What well, they try to throw me in a dress?" Well, she was like, "You get yeah, right." <laughs> My mom said, going for that, man. She ain't going for that. She didn't really want me to get my nose pierced. She talking about, nah, nah, that's that's not that's not G. So yeah, y'all y'all know what's gonna happen. They try to put me in a dress. Fam ain't going for it. They're gonna be like, bro, you tripping? And if I did it anyway, just know my family probably ain't dealing with me, cause they gonna know. They gonna know I didn't sold out, man. But yeah, that's crazy, man. They get everybody, Kid Cuddy, him. Who else? Who else coming? It's two in the morning. And the lights are like so weird. I've never seen lights do that. Okay, 
I saw this and I have to, have to share this with you. Attention, remember these four major events to come in the following dates. Let me adjust my hat. Let's see what is being said. And tell me if you want to save these dates or think this is all bullshit or how the fuck these dates come up and where does information come from? Let's go. June 29th. 197 mysterious statues around the world, one in each country, each one is explosive. These statues were placed here to track and scare humanity. They release many terrible things. That's the first date. Day two, July 4th. A massive alien ship appears in the sky, just staring at us, studying, trying to decide when to attack. They are known as the 47. They place the statues and want to take back what's theirs. Interesting. So we got June and July 4th. Let's go to the third day. August 15th. A species of bird previously thought as extinct reappears and begins humming a scary melody. People who hear it lose control of themselves and hundreds begin passing away every single day. <laughs> so we got June. July, August. Let's see the last and final fourth date. November 22nd. Genetic engineering is made public, allowing people to customize their children. This will also make it so there are no genetic defects or diseases and everyone will have a great health to start with. With what I know, that's the one date I do believe. No cat. But what do you think? You think these dates are just bullshit? Do you think there's any type of validity to these dates that someone posted? Where did they get this information from? And why are they so specific on the events happening on these dates? This is a video I would favor just to see when these dates come around. What this is. Now, if you know me, I hate, I hate date setting. I hate it. I hate it. I think it's all bullshit. Nothing fucking happens. But these aren't the world's going to end type dates. These are very specific events that are telling you. Me personally? <laughs> I don't know. This is just content. But I wanted to make it aware for you guys. Tell me what you think. Tell me if you believe. Tell me if you think this is just another fucking thing people just want to speculate on and go viral. Or did someone find out some type of information, gave it to us, and gave us a head start of notice on it? Peace yeah. I don't think the dates are accurate, but I think the information possibly is accurate. I, I, I just can't see the, the, the forward dating, planning the date and all that. I can't see that being the case, but I can definitely see that stuff happening. But I always think they got their hands in on it. Them birds didn't just magically reappear. They had them birds and they re they probably restarted that species and then they probably genetically modified. They gonna put them out there. People customizing their kids, that's crazy. I mean we customize shoes, we customize uh my players on video games, we customize our phones, our cars, our why wouldn't people choose their kids? But that's wild, that's too overboard for me. That ain't God God's not to me, you gotta have to let God control that. Like, whatever you're supposed to have, whatever, you, and, and in life ain't going to be perfect. It's talking about diseases gone and birth defects. Man, they're not going to be able to stop that stuff. I don't see it happening, bro. I don't see it happening. And it's like they almost trying to, they, they, they control, like I always said, they controlling too much. They trying to play God. Man, that's out, man. That's out. And the alien invasion, we know, ain't no alien, ain't no real alien species coming here to Earth to take over us. For what? When they come, just take it. They got millions of, of years of military and weaponry and stuff. Like, well, let's we we shooting bullets, bro. Come on, what what do you? Whatever. They be letting them green. Can't say the word. Them green lights coming down, burning up stuff. Like, come on, bro. It's gonna be a fake alien invasion. The UFOs is gonna be a military. Is it gonna be designed by an entity that the government created, or is gonna be the government flying them? But it ain't gonna be a real alien species, and yeah. I can see all them situations happening, but can I see those days being accurate? No, I cannot. Uh, the bringing in, ushering in, ushering in the new financial system during the, the yeah. 
leaving the old system, which is SWIFT, which is, you know, a banking, you know, mechanism, which is sends wires, cross-border payments, but that system is old and slow. So it's ushering in and leaving the old system SWIFT. So Taylor Swift, Usher, that's the link. Ushering, SWIFT, yeah. And, marker. and get this, XRP actually equals Super Bowl 58. Oh, XRP. like gematria or numerology? Right. Yes, so X, if you add up all the letters XRP, all of them add up to 58. We're in Super Bowl 58. Oh, snap. That's wild. Yeah. yeah that's wild. Now, uh, I remember I showed Jordan Maxwell uh, XRP because I thought else like XLM or Stellar or, or something totally different. You XLM, know, big one. I think XLM is the sleeper. I think XLM is really... The, the, the winning horse in this whole system. At White House Senior Living, our residents feel right at home. Our vibrant facility offers delightful activities and outings, round-the-clock professional care, and exquisite house-made meals. Well, I've been eating everything that's put in front of me, but I've been eating all, all Italian food, basically. And ice cream. And ice cream, chocolate chip ice cream. White House Senior Living, where residents feel like presidents. Okay, we got on Biden ass today. Trump, we coming for your ass again. Barry, we coming for your ass again. And Bush, we coming for your sh we coming for your shit too. How y'all feel about that last clip? Is it a scene living now? Something ain't right with bro. Something ain't right with bro. I'm gonna just say that something ain't right. I got a video coming that I just found and. Yeah, just he, he looks weird to me, bro. He just he looks weird. That'd be in next week's video starting Thursday. Yeah, starting Thursday. That's when y'all get that video. But we made it to the end of this, man. I appreciate y'all if y'all stuck all the way through. If you haven't already, please like, comment, subscribe. Hit that bell so you always notify whenever we drop an upload. Again, y'all know we coming with both videos a week. Man, this is for entertainment and educational purposes as well. When you like and comment and subscribe to the channel, it helps the collective grow, helps us get bigger, helps more people who like this type of content tap in with this content. But I ain't gonna hold you until I see y'all in the next one. We gone. Hey, yeah, yeah. I just check my count. Check. Sheesh.